Well, this is <clears throat> truly the final day in Firenze for me. Uh, my train leaves the depot uh, later this evening around 6 and takes me to Rome where I, where I will fly back to Boston. But this last day is, is so important. Um, the um, rest of my group has gone home and one artist has remained behind with me to explore the city once more. And we're going to the Boboli Gardens uh, this afternoon to look again at, at some of the areas that Sargent painted. This is a piece that inspired me when I was, I was a teenager to pick up watercolor, and it still inspires me. Sargent, in my estimation, is one of the greatest uh, painters in history, and especially how he <clears throat> led the charge with watercolor, which he called the master's medium is still uh, exciting to me, the way he used his brush, the way he used a simple palette, and of course his skill with form and uh, architecture combined to make some of the, the best watercolors uh, that I've seen. This is our first, our stop in the Bubbly Gardens, and it's, I don't recall a, a painting by Sargent of this particular fountain, but certainly he did many statues and fountains that are within the Boboli Gardens. And it's fun to to revisit these and see things that uh, Sargent may have stopped to paint, uh, see them in the same light that he saw them. Uh, they really have, many places have remained unchanged. And uh, to think about, you know, the value of what he left behind as an artist, uh, it's still inspiring to Everyone that I've talked to has a favorite Sargent painting, and many share some similar ones. And uh, he's the reason that quite a few artists uh, move towards watercolor. This first uh, passage that you see me doing is setting up the light area of uh, the painting, the painting that will be receiving the light. I find it very helpful to place this sort of form, this, this silhouetted form, with the brush. Sargent was a great draftsman, and he, you can still see his pencil work underneath his watercolors. Uh, he seemed, when he started to use the brush, to be free of that, but I find, for myself, a freedom in starting with the brush, uh, and I find that I am <clears throat> um, am able to capture the form with more strength and uh, confidence than if I'm laying it in with pencil first and then uh, placing color into that. So that's why you see me working directly with the brush. Um, part of the attraction of this scene was the, su uh, the sunlight. Um, we're here late in the afternoon We've painted the Ponte Vecchio once. Um, a fellow artist, Amy Hurahan, and I set out in the morning. We made a stop at the Ponte Vecchio and painted it in the morning light. We've moved on to Boboli Gardens. We're getting a little tired, it's true, but uh, the excitement is enough to kind of pull us forward. And <clears throat> in these gardens, there's a nice, quiet calm to them, uh, contrary to the streets of Florence where you can relax and, and have a meditation. And we found a shady spot to focus on this fountain. I uh, spent some time to mix up the greens in this painting. The, my uh, habit is to mix the green rather than straight from the tube. And I, I favor uh, the warm greens in this case are important. So I'm mixing a lot of orange with some neutral tint and a little bit of cad yellow to try and achieve a green that's going to give me uh, a sunstruck feeling. Yeah, the tonality of this green is important and because <clears throat> it's going to be showing off the bright sunstruck sta uh, statuary. And here you see me applying, uh, I'm basically painting the trees behind 
but I look at the the way the brush is able to capture some of the broken areas of the trees and and really quickly establish the big forms. Uh, as I move through the greenery, I add a little bit of yellow here, a little bit of orange here, a little bit of blue there to evoke a, a transition in the green. And I'm getting close to the statuary, but I'm not really uh, defining it yet. As I come down, I'm thinking more about those lemon uh, trees that are potted and rest on the, the sides of uh, around the fountain and bordering the watered area. So you see a lot of whites there. Those possibly later will be turned into lemons. And now I'm, in, I'm starting to uh, create uh, the profile of this statue. The angle that I have uh, gives me a good view of the, his profile. He's kind of looking down towards us and we can see the, his features very clearly, even from a great distance. It's always a little tricky point how much detail to give to something at this distance. How much do we really want to show? I'm trying to keep it rather simple at this point and, and not get into too much of the anatomy or the details. The one place that I do, um, I will add a little detail is on the profile, the, the side that's facing the sun. And this to me was one of Sargent's fortes. His, he, he was uh, an artist since a young man. I believe he was studying at the academy as a teenager and possibly younger. And it was successful from an early age too. So. He's an unusual example, uh, Turner being another one, where these artists were uh, able to paint their whole lives and they lived long lives. They lived you know, into their 80s. And the result that we see, especially towards the end of their career, is quite unique because they were able to continue to paint into their late years. Monet's another example. And I believe that they, their best work, for the most part, came about in their late years. And quite a luxury to be able to paint that long in one's life. And I think that you gain a vision and a maturity through experience, uh, not just artistic experience, but life experience that makes its way into your painting. And so these artists, and there are, there are many others that were able to pay paint well into their mature years, give us sort of an unusual, a rare um, perspective. Um, what I'm doing now is dropping down some shadows, deeper shadows to divide the brights in the trees. These dark shadows too also help me to bring forth the statuary. Um, you can paint it as it is, but I chose to put a few more dark shadows close to the to the statue and to the profile of the smaller statues below, so that I can uh, bring I can make them feel even brighter. If I bring a dark close to that bright edge, <clears throat> suddenly it becomes very strong, and the sunlight feels much much stronger. You see me going into the fountain now. This is one of the uh, it's an area that um, Sargent, some of his fountains, I really just love looking at them. And he had a way of bringing out the yellow ochre and blue shadows uh, with a few strokes. And it's not that I'm trying to paint as Sargent was, was painting, but I am definitely learned a lot in looking at his paintings. And some of the qualities that he brought to painting that I think we all appreciate are his uh, ability to uh, draw, create the shapes as we see them, his ability to use brushwork in a just um, commanding fashion. And that came to his oil painting. I think it's, it's more obvious and more striking in his watercolor painting, <clears throat> but his command of the brush is just phenomenal. Um, and that's, you know, definitely something that I admire and try to bring to my painting. So it's not necessarily that I'm trying to paint like him, but definitely he influenced the way that I paint.
And so I continue with these shadows, make, giving a little more form to the trees, of course, but also giving me some rich darks behind the, the statue. You can tell now that that top figure is starting to come out. The lower figures, we see the profile and, and the not so much the details yet. The basin, the fountain basin is practically complete. A few touches of the burnt sienna that, that aged the fountain, a cobalt blue across the bottom to give it a nice shadowed appearance. And I'm ready to start to, to work below. Uh, this fountain um, is a similar color, similar tonality to the balustrades and uh, area that face the water. So I'm going to just continue with the same palette and uh, gradually build up the darker areas to try and capture the sunlight. As we wandered the Bobo Gardens, they're quite large. Uh, they twist and turn and and they ascend uh, a tall hill where you can look out over Florence. A uh, very popular place. People love to walk through and see the, 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 the gardens. And many people just stopping in the shadows for a bite of lunch and to reflect. And uh, this is sort of a meditation for Amy and I as we're painting this scene. You know, we're definitely focused on our subject. At the same time, we're remembering the the whole past week of painting in Florence and, and what we saw, what we did. And we're also thinking about uh, uh, the master sergeant and you know the life that he had and, and how he um, transformed uh, painting in his own way, how he certainly elevated the status of watercolor. So there's a lot to be, you know, a lot to, a lot of thoughts that go on in your head while you're painting. Sometimes you're really focused on the subject, everything else disappears. Sometimes, you know, you're in a more emotional state and and your memories wander and, and this sort of thing. So I'm moving back and forth between the lower section and the upper section, letting the upper section dry so I can place some strong shadows into the statuary try to capture that sunlight. And these figures below, they're quite complex. They're beautiful, beautiful figures, dynamic poses, but they're so small, even with a fine brush, it's hard to exact their forms. Uh, it was a point where Naturally, I slowed down and tried to give some pre precision to a few simple marks and, and give the, the forms a readability with as much simplicity as I could. And then I'll move down to the lower section and try to finish that off. Uh, the area around the Boboli Gardens is quite interesting also. Um, you feel the history you feel the, the, the uh, intelligence of the class that brought it about, too. Um, the way that they structured it was uh, very peaceful and thought-provoking. And uh, that's definitely something that we picked up walking through the gardens. Some smaller touches into the deeper shadows. As things dry, I, I find that um, I'm either satisfied or I feel oh, it's dried a little pale and I don't hesitate to move in with a, a stronger version of the color to bring it out. And I'm ready to think about doing this lower section, the section of, it's a basically a reflecting pool that surrounds this, this statuary. And it's a nice feedback uh, for, for the painter. The, the trick is to keep it rather soft-spoken. Um, it's definitely picking up on the same colors. I find that uh, moving forward with the big brush and a little sense of speed helps me to keep it fresh. So I, I put in the colors as I think they should be and a few of the reflections that uh, allude to the, the um, balustrades that are directly above the water and a hint of some of the greenery behind 
and this is practically enough. And this is done also while the paint is wet. So we're working wet and wet here to take advantage of watercolors nature and get some soft edges uh, to the marks that we make so that they, they appear to be reflections, more like reflections than if we had painted them on um, a dry surface or a dry, dry paint. Still, it's, it's, it's a fun thing to place reflections and it can really complement um, the whole scene. So the painting is starting to <clears throat> acquire a finished feel at this point. Everything is in its place, uh, the tonality is set, the mid-value um, which surrounds the statuary, these rich greens and the green that's reflected into the reflecting pool is my mid-value and then I have a strong light passage in the uh, balustrades and facing the water, the statue above the fountain. These are my lights, they're connected through, so it, compositionally um, this worked out pretty well. A few more darks to, while the paint is still wet, I feel I have a, an opportunity to add darks and um, add darks with some softer edges so that they kind of dissolve into the water and don't overtake the, the focal point that I've created. These fine darks really help to bring the, the sharp elements out. The sun is behind, so it's a little different scenario, and as such, it's a little more difficult to render uh, where your subject is bright against a strong midtone. Well, here's the finished piece. I feel I got the light that was uh, behind us. Uh, it did okay on the statuary. It satisfi satisfies me. And I feel that uh, I was walking in Sergeant's footsteps today. <laughs>